Hello and namaste. My name is Brandon, and in this video, we're going to do a high-level overview of the AIC, AICC, and BIC. So let's get to it. Now, if you perform a best subsets regression in statistical software, you might get something that looks like this. Now, this specific output is from JUMP, or JMP, which is put out by SAS. So here we have the best subsets output, we have all of our one variable models, our two variable models, our three variable models, and then our maximum, in this case, of four variables. This is the house price data we've been using in this playlist. You can see that each column is a measure for a quality of the model. So we have R squared, RMSE, which is root mean square error. It's also the standard error of the regression, by the way. Then we have AICC, BIC, and then CP, which is Mallow's C. In this video, we're looking at the two columns, AIC and BIC. The first thing you should notice about AIC, C, and BIC is that the numbers are very close together. That's because they're actually kind of cousins of each other. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about what they are, how to interpret them, and how to use them to select the best model. So first, these are just measures for evaluating and comparing models. So it's similar in usage to other model evaluation techniques, such as the adjusted R square, the standard error of the regression, which is also, like I said before, the root mean square error, which is also known as the standard error of the regression, or just S. Then we have Mallow's CP. Now, I have done videos on all of these in this playlist. So if you want, you can go back and watch those and then catch up to this one. But basically, these are all doing the same thing. We don't use them blindly but in the context with other measures and domain knowledge. So when we get that output that we saw before, we're not looking at one measure necessarily. We're looking at all of our models and then comparing the scores across these measures to select the best model we want to use. AIC, AICC, and BIC basics. So the Akiike information criterion that's the AIC and the AICC. And a note here that the AICC is just a corrected version of the AIC that's designed for smaller samples. The AICC converges to the AIC as the number of observations goes up. It's very similar to the normal distribution and the t-distribution. So the t-distribution is for cases where we don't know the population standard deviation. But as the sample size goes up, the T distribution basically becomes the normal distribution. This is very similar. So the AICC is just corrected for small samples and a lot of software packages like Jump that we saw before, just go ahead and output the AICC because as the sample size goes up, it turns into the AIC anyway. Then we have the Bayesian information criterion that is the BIC. Now, if you want to get the gist of this video, this is it. The lowest value for the AIC and the BIC, the lowest value is the best. But unfortunately, that value doesn't make really intuitive sense, like Mallow CP, which is just P plus one. So P in that case, remember, is the number of variables in our model. That's our target for Mallow's. So if we have three variables, the target we're looking at is four, and that makes intuitive sense. Also things like the adjusted R square makes intuitive sense. That is the proportion of variation explained by the model. And then standard error of the regression is also intuitive. Now both the AIC and the BIC penalize complex models. And this is a pattern for all of these measures. So the AIC, the BIC, Mallow's, adjusted R square, then you have like L1 and L2, which in their own way penalize complex models. And the whole idea here is to avoid overfitting the model. So as the model becomes more complex, we penalize them, each of these in their own way. We penalize those models to avoid overfitting. This is based on the concept of maximum likelihood estimation, so MLE. It's closely related by this term that we'll see, which is negative two times the log likelihood, also known as negative two LL. You'll probably see that in formulas if you go deeper into this topic. Maximum likelihood can get very complicated, very complicated. So we're gonna keep things high level and simple in this video. 
I might go into more depth later, but we're going to keep things high level and focus on how to use and interpret these measures. And if you want more information on maximum likelihood, the best place to go right now is over to StatQuest. And Josh has a great video on maximum likelihood or likelihood in general. And I will link that in the description below if you want to go more in depth on maximum likelihood. So in regression, which we call Gaussian, these two, the AIC and the BIC, are related to the MSC, which is the mean square error. So the likelihood is something we're trying to maximize, whereas the MSC, the mean square error, is what we're trying to minimize. And we're probably more familiar with that at this point. So you can think of these two things sort of as opposites. So the likelihood curve goes upward to a point, and then the MSE curve goes downward to a point. And actually they're sort of the flip of each other. Now, one thing about the AIC and the BIC is that finding consistent formulas can be a challenge. So obviously I do a lot of research for these videos and I look around to find sort of the best way of expressing them, the standard way of expressing these formulas. And if you do it yourself, you will find out that there are many ways or different formulas that are shown for the AIC and the BIC. Now they all have similarities and they, and they all generate sort of the closest value, but they're not necessarily all consistent. So you just have to keep that in mind if you go look at these a bit further. So for example, here are some formulas for the AICC. So in these formulas, N is the number of observations we have, and K is the number of parameters in our model. So here is our first one. I'm not gonna read through it because trying to read through these complex formulas and then having the captions and everything is a bit complicated, but you can look at this and see how it is put together. That's one version. Here is another version of the AICC, and yet here again, is a third version. You can see that this bottom version takes the AIC and then adds this penalty term for smaller samples, which is what that thing on the right there is, that fraction on the right. In this middle one, you'll see SSE. That is a sum of squared errors. And of course, if you've done regression, you have seen that quite a lot. So we kind of think of this middle formula as an approximation under the specific instance of regression. So we can use this one because we can find the SSE, we can obviously find N and K. So once we have those three things, we can calculate the EICC. The problem is that actually calculating the log likelihood, the negative two log likelihood up there is very complex. So what we do in the case of regression is we can use this approximation here in the middle and we'll see how that works here in a second. Now note this term over here, like I said before, this is the correction for small sample sizes in large Ks. So if you look at this fraction over here on the right, what happens to the overall term when the number of observations goes down? Well, if N goes smaller, that means this term on the bottom is gonna to lead to a larger fraction, all else remaining equal, and that smaller N will add more to the AIC, leading to an AICC that's larger and remember, the idea here is for smaller values to be best. So that's how we do this correction for smaller samples. So same thing for the BIC. Here is the first version of that formula. Here is a second version of that formula. And here is the third version. Now, of course, you'll notice the same thing. We have the SSC term here in the middle and on the bottom, by the way. And we can use these to approximate under the special case of regression. Computer output. Here's the output we're gonna use. We're gonna to try to replicate. This is from the example we've been doing in this playlist. So we are modeling house price data using four variables, the square footage of the home, whether or not it is an exemplary high school school district, that's a binary variable, zero, one, number of bathrooms in the home, and the number of bedrooms in the home. And we found out that this three variable model was the best. So here we have the SSC, which we will need, and then we have the AICC and the BIC over on the right that we're gonna to try to replicate by hand. So here's the calculation. Here's the formula we're gonna use. It looks nasty, but it's not that bad. It's just algebra. Just have to substitute everything in. We go ahead and do that. We put in our SSE and our N, so we can see where those are inserted. Our K is three, because we have three variables in this model. We go ahead and do out all that algebra, all that math. 
we get an AICC of 1019.89. Now, if we look at the output, it's not exactly the same. So in jump, we have an AICC of 1024.28. Now that's very close, but it's not exactly the same. And while I can't go into the code and figure out exactly what's going on in this case, I would imagine it's because we're using this approximation of the AICC that makes it off by just a little bit. However, as long as we are using the same formula to compare all of those models we had in that list, it doesn't really matter in this case because again, we're all going to be we're going to be using the same values from the for the SSE, and then the observations are always a hundred, so we can still compare them. So as long as we're internally consistent, we can compare uh, each model. But by hand, it's not exactly the same but it's pretty close. BIC is the same way. We substitute everything in, do the math out, and we get a BIC of 1,027.46. So again, in the output, it is 1,036.67. Again, not exactly the same. And I believe that's because we're using the approximation specific to regression when we're using the formula here. But again, as long as we're internally consistent, we should be able to compare models. So if you notice, when we did the math out and we kind of take each term separately, you can see that the AICC and the BIC are almost the same. Over on the left-hand side, we have this term that equals 729.85, which we'll get to in a minute. Then we have a little bit of difference in the middle. Then we have the 183.79, then of course the 100 there on the end. So the terms are almost identical between the AIC and the BIC. And of course that is because they are highly related. And the BIC, penalizes things a little bit more. So the score is a little bit higher consistently. However, you can see they're very similar. So you'll notice this term that appears in all of these formulas. It's the negative two log likelihood. And if you go back and look at those formulas again, you will notice that that is in the place of this other term, which is N times the natural log of SSE divided by N. So, in one version of the formulas, you'll have negative two LL. In the regression special case formulas, you'll see this term over here on the right. So we can say that the negative two log likelihood is about the same as this term over here on the right. So two things to keep in mind, least squares is a special case of maximum likelihood estimation. Again, I'm not gonna go into all that in this video. Again, go ahead and check out the other video I mentioned. And number two, these likelihood measure values are dependent on sample size, which is N. So I said at the beginning that the AIC and the BIC scores aren't all that intuitive, and that's because they are based largely on the sample size that you're dealing with. So you just have to keep that in mind. Whereas Mallow's is much easier to grasp intuitively because it's based on the number of parameters in the model in terms of our interpretation. So just keep that in mind, but again, Lower is better, lowest is the best. So here we are back to our output and how do we select the best model? Well, if we look at all of our models, we're gonna look across these measures. So where is our R square the highest given the complexity of the model? Well, we can see that an R square of 0 0.7326, that is slightly lower than the full model of 0 0.7358, but we're not really gaining anything by adding that fourth variable. So we tend to say that in this, in this case for R squared, this first three variable model is the best. What about root mean square error? Again, that is a measure of how our data points sort of fit around our regression line, plane, multi-dimensional space. So we're looking for the lowest value here. And we can see that again, the value of 39.2395, that's just a bit higher than the full model of 39.2089. And again, that difference is so insignificant that we would not consider that as being that big of a gain. And we would resort back to the three variable model we have highlighted there. We're gonna go to the far right. We have Mallow CP. So the Mallow C measure is 4.15 approximately. Remember the goal there is P plus one. So P in this case is the three number of variables, plus one is four. We want to approach four from above, that's our goal. So 4.15 is about as good as we can get on that measure. So based on Mallow's, we would also select this model. 
you can see the other variables are quite a bit higher. Also a reminder that mallows will equal exactly P plus one in the full model. So if you see the four variable model at the very bottom, we have four plus one equals exactly five, and that's the value for mallow C over here on the right. Based on that, we would select this model as well. Now let's look at the AIC, C, and the BIC columns. Remember, lowest is better. Well, here it's interesting because the AIC C value for this model is 1024.28. The AIC C value for the full model at the bottom is 1025.34. So in that case, we can see that the value for the three variable model is the best. And we can look at all the other models above and none of those is smaller. So based on the AICC, we would also select this model. Now over to the BIC, it's 1036.67. If we go down to the full model at the bottom, it's 1040.07, which is higher. We want lower. So based on the other values in that column, we would also conclude that this model is the best in terms of being the simplest while avoiding overfitting. Now I should also mention here before we go that the AIC and the BIC have applications well beyond regression. This is just one case of how these are used. The AIC appears quite often in time series analysis. You might see it there. And they also have qualities that make them a bit more flexible. So some of these other measures rely on nested models. So the two models we're comparing, one has to be a subset of the other. Whereas in the AIC, and I do believe the BIC as well, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. So they have some flexibility and some other applications outside of regression. But here in this case, just looking at multiple regression, we can see how we use them in concert with these other measures. All right, that wraps up this video on the AIC, the AICC, and the BIC. Again, just a high level overview of what they are, how we use and interpret them, and then how we can kind of calculate them by hand. So I hope this helps you choose the best model in your best subsets regression. So thank you very much for watching. I wish you all the best in your work and in your studies, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Take care and bye-bye.